do you think, Tom, that um, given that the you know the kind of change in spiritual outlooks, the growth of uh, new thoughts, not only uh, from the 19th and early 20th century, but also into 12-step fellowships and people seeking out a different, you know, face in terms of uh, Native American Indian and Indian gurus. How do you think we fit in with all of that? Unity as, as a movement fits in amongst all the things that are on offer in this modern world. Well, I believe we're in the thick of it in the mainstream, and I also believe that we could be a leader a kind of clearinghouse for people of uh, differing perspectives. What is happening is people are becoming more aware of their autonomy, of their spiritual power, and seeking ways to express it. Well, that's what Unity's been trying to offer people for well over 120 years now. And many of these other groups are even older. The problem, of course, is finding like-minded people communicating with them and providing the kinds of activities mm -hmm. that enhance what people are doing. Largely in traditional religion, um, not in modern times because churches are, are updating and really recognizing advances, but in the past people were looked at as far less important and the individual's choice and the individual's autonomy was not well respected. Mm -hmm. Obedience was the word. And when I say that people weren't important, well, they were important, but not as independent mm -hmm. thinkers. And now, oh, whether you grant people that right or not, that's how many of them are going to proceed. Mm -hmm. They have the right. They know they have the right. Uh, they aren't going to assent to a list of propositions because someone told them they ought to. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who, throughout the world, I don't know, I don't speak to that many people throughout the world, but I do know the perception of Unity Village in the UK is as if it's some kind of Mecca. You know, you kind of go, it's like the New Jerusalem. Uh, it's, it's difficult to explain, and I myself got kind of carried away with all that, and when I've been to the village a few times. Do you think that's detrimental to the to the village itself, that it's become a kind of icon rather than a practical unit? It can be, because sometimes the image of Unity Village that a person builds up in his or her mind becomes so grand that the reality is almost certain to disappoint. Mm -hmm. Unity Village is, however, um, a focusing place of consciousness. It was first explored in 1919 and the deal was closed in 1920 and the place itself has a colorful history of development from what was essentially a campground for summer vacations uh, to what you see as Unity Village today. It's a vibrant place. I've worked there 21 years and I've never uh, completely lost sight of its vibrancy. Sometimes when I'm in the thick of my own issues uh, I forget, but it never completely goes away. Mm -hmm. The thing that makes Unity Village the special place that it is is not the architecture, although that's grand. It's not the gardens, although they're lovely. Uh, it's not even the history, although that's drawing closer to it. What makes it the special place it is is the consciousness that has been invested in it over all those years. And consciousness, you see, is non-local. Mm -hmm. I remind people when they come and they feel a special energy at Unity Village that that energy is at Unity Village because they are at Unity Village contributing to it even as they draw from it mm -hmm. uh, to lift themselves up. Now as we grow in understanding we come to the realization that locale is of far less importance than we used to believe it was. Mm -hmm. Um, now we have not only electronic means of communication, for example, uh, I've participated in conferences in the States while I've been here uh, without having to leave my, my place upstairs in what we lovingly call the flat. But there is a sense, much more of a sense, of global community among many people. Isolationism is beginning to 
lose its hold and we are moving toward the awareness that all humankind is much more related than separate. Mm. So Unity Village, yes, we can oversell it. We try not to, mm -hmm. but some people build up a large ca large case for it in their minds. Mm -hmm. uh, is it special? Yes, it's special. And why is it special? Because of the consciousness mm -hmm. that's there. Mm -hmm. Okay? With that in mind, Tom, I'd like to move to the UK, Unity in the UK, um, which I think you have a good understanding of. How do you perceive us here in the UK? And I'm talking about not just um, Maidenhead, but also Silent Unity and Daily Word in the UK, the AUL, the National School, the group in Huddersfield and Birmingham. Mm -hmm. how, how do you perceive that? I perceive it as, in many ways, closer to the Founders' vision than we see anywhere else. Unity in the United States is a recognized religious organization today, a church, if you will. On the most respected religious surveys, we are showing up now by name, mm -hmm. although as a, as a distant minority to other churches. Um, the founder's vision of Unity was that it be uh, a supportive organization for people of all faiths. And that's what it remains in, in theory although uh, so many in practice are consider themselves members of unity and unity is their faith. In the UK, we have something different. I meet many people in the UK who perfectly comfortably say, well, I go to the Roman Catholic Church or the Methodist Church or Church of England in the morning and I come to unity in the afternoon. Um, the groups meet much more informally, uh, except for this facility in Maidenhead, and the two in London, uh, many of them meet in homes or in public buildings. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily meet every week. Uh, they tailor their work to the spiritual needs of the, uh, of the people they serve. And the Association of Unity Leaders, the AUL, uh, I've been delighted to watch it grow in focus. And um, as Claire told me last night, Reverend Claire Grierson Thomas, um, she said the AUL's time and the National School's time is now. The National School is a very powerful way of training people for leadership positions here in the UK uh, rather than rely, rely on uh, the home office or anything like that. The leaders in the UK know the needs of the UK and are really able, quite able, better able than anyone else to prepare leaders to meet those needs. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited by what I see in the UK. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you that I've become more excited by it every time I've been here. I've been doing a bit of teaching, quite a bit of teaching this time. Mm -hmm. And the uh, perceptiveness of the students, uh, their dedication just to get to class, because many of them have to take two or three trains to get here, uh, is, is admirable. I, I have a bright feeling or an enthusiastic feeling for Unity's future in the UK. And as I said, in some ways it reflects more of the Founders' original intention uh, than I find in the US. The whole idea of being one is very important, I think, rather than feeling that each of the little things throughout either the UK or the US of A. Mm -hmm. What I would like to see is a stronger connection throughout the world mm -hmm. of the unity movement and I wonder how you feel that could be achieved. For example, unity in the UK, I, I can't really talk for other countries, but unity in the UK, how do you feel we could connect more with the US of A and they with us? The first is to be aware. Um, people in the US uh, many of them know that there is unity work outside the U.S., but they aren't terribly aware of it. It's because they don't have too much information about it, even though that information is available. You, for example, have a fine website. I tell people about it in some of my courses so that they can um, expand their horizons. Uh, most of the people here have some awareness of what goes on in the U.S. There's plenty of information there. Uh, there's not as much communication as I would like to see. Now, I believe it was two years ago, you and Kimry 
were part of that wonderful meeting of Daily Word and Silent Unity mm, leaders indeed. that took place at Unity Village. I was privileged to be uh, invited to one of those uh, gatherings, and I was so sad that thousands more people weren't privy to what was going on there. Mm. That was true worldwide communication mm. on a very high level, mm. on an important level. Common concerns were shared and different ways of dealing with them. For example, I noticed that the uh, leaders from Mexico and Australia were sharing internet technology because they both had the problem of dealing with people in remote areas mm -hmm. that had no way of getting to meetings physically and so had to be served electronically. When we come together and find effective ways to be aware of and communicate with each other, uh, I think we can discover that we have common concerns that we can work on together and also that people you might not expect have solutions to problems that you're dealing with now. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the answer to communication is first of all willingness. Is this something I desire to put on my agenda and invest more time in? Uh, in today's world where a lot of people have some fairly serious concerns, the tendency is to draw inward and not to look outward at the bigger world. Perhaps looking outward would offer more hope. Mm -hmm. the sec first, we have to have the ability and we have to have the interest. Mm -hmm. We've got the ability. What's missing in too many cases is the interest. People have to want to do it. Mm -hmm.